Uh, we will be led by C Vice President Laura Toy and joined by our longtime Chief City Accountant, Mr. Fred Lundy. Welcome, sir. If you'd like to come up here and help us with the Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, come on up. Okay. Plus down there. Oh, oh. here, stay right. right there. He won't bite you. No, no, no. No, very good. Please come, come on. Up. Come on. Thank you, sir. Yeah. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you very much, Mr. Lundy. Like I said, good evening, Livonia. Welcome to the September 7th, 2022 regular meeting of the Livonia City Council. Uh, this is the 1,952nd regular meeting. The items approved this evening will appear, um, excuse me, the minutes of this meeting will appear to be voted on on the agenda of the Monday, September 26, 2022 meeting. At this time, I'll ask our Deputy Clerk, Lori Miller, to take the roll. Vice President Toy. Here. Council Member Barr. Here. Council Member Donovic. Here. Council Member Morgan. Here. Council Member McIntyre. Here. President Jolly. Present. We have all but one member of the council here. Mr. McCullough is out of town on a, uh, an adventure representing the United States in a ball hockey tournament of all things. <laughs> uh, so we wish him the best of luck and uh, hope he comes back with some kind of hardware in regards to his little trip here. Um, at this time, I would entertain a motion for the meeting minutes of the 1,951st regular meeting. So moved. Support. Meeting minutes moved by Ms. Toy, supported by Ms. McIntyre. Is there any comment from the council or the audience? I see none at this time. Ms. Miller, will you take the vote, please? Vice President Toy. Aye. Council Member Barr. Aye. Council Member Donovic. Aye. Council Member Morgan. Aye. Council Member McIntyre. Aye. President Jolly. Present. Uh, the minutes are approved. At this time, I will go to my colleague, Mr. Morgan, who has a special recognition for Mr. Fred Lundy. Mr. Lundy. Mr. Lundy, I'd like to Thank read this accommodation from the uh, Livonia City Council. Uh, Fred Lundy, born September 8th, 1922, will be celebrating his 100th birthday, surrounded by friends and family. And Fred began his uh, worldly journey as a fully fledged glider pilot in 1942 in the US Army Air Corps, was promoted to first lieutenant and received the Air Medal. He will be receiving the orange lanyard during the 50th annual National World War II glider pilot reunion. He gave 11 years of service, which included serving in World War II and the Korean War. Fred later studied at Clarity University, receiving a bachelor's degree in accounting and became the owner and partner of Huron Valley Dairy in Belleville, Michigan. Fred transitioned from the sponsored research coordinator at the University of Michigan from 1956 to 1965 to spending a decade as trustee supervisor for Ypsilanti Township, Michigan, from 1960 to 1970. Fred joined the city staff from 1971 to 1982 as the assistant chief accountant, later being promoted to chief accountant for the city of Livonia. Fred now spends much of his time writing uh, Portraits um, about his life shared with others. Therefore, the City of Livonia Council does hereby take this opportunity to congratulate Fred Lundy on his 100th year of life and wish him many more. Signed, the City Council. Go ahead. Congratulations, Fred. I think you're 
from you, though. I'll stand behind you guys. I have it. I was trying to speak up a little. Congratulations. Yes, he did. Before we do the picture, would you like to say anything? We'll, we'll do that afterwards. Oh, okay. Because we're all up now. Okay. <laughs> We'd like to take a picture with you first. Come on, Fred. Right. Grab your uh, smokers. Take it with you. <laughs> watch, watch that cord. Watch the cord. You'll get a lot of money from the city from crypto. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right there. Uh, uh, he's, he's to <laughs> Come over so this way. Move this way just a little bit. Just a little bit. So we can get in front of the swag. Laura? Hey, Laura. Some words of wisdom at the podium, very okay? Cool. Very good. I hope I can make it that long, buddy. That's cool. We all do. We all do. We hope we can make it. Right? So we all do. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm getting there. Send a shoe for it, right? I'm getting there. Quit your laughing. Quit your laughing. Okay. Hello, Mr. Lundy. I'm not uh, able to talk too clearly Thank you. since I have a polyp. And uh, uh, Dr. Fossey, if you remember who he is, yeah. at 84, he had a polyp and had the voice like that. But he was operated on and they took the polyp off and it was all right. Now, my doctor says it can't do anything for me. He doesn't want to operate on a hundred year old man. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't say I blame him. <laughs> uh, and I noticed that uh, you must have a very excellent counsel because there isn't anybody complaining out here. <laughs> no, I, I was hired in by um, Mr. Uh, Bacon, a city clerk. At that time, the finance department, and I was the assistant chief accountant, the finance department was under the city clerk. Um, and then, due to a vote by the people, we had a finance department, as you have now. And then at that time, it became um, under the mayor's jurisdiction. Uh, I played out of golf. <laughs> I enjoyed working. And uh, I thank you very much for this honor. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Lundy. Mr. President. Mr. President. No, we want to. We want to. We want to talk to you for a couple minutes. We, we were looking over some old reports and we found some uh, mathematical errors. No, I'm just joking. No, we want to. We want to give you our best here. Thank you, uh, Vice President Toy. Thank you. I just wanted to say that um, I've been informed that Fred is going to be on TV tomorrow uh, on the Smuckers commercial. If any of you watch Channel Four in the morning, they. Um, honor people that are 100 years old, and Smuckers is a jelly for those of you that, you know, haven't partake in it. And I talked to Fred before, and he said he's on the preserved Smuckers. So uh, way to go, Fred. Thank you for all your service to our great city, too. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Donovan. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, congratulations, Fred, and uh, thank you for your service to the city and to your nation. While my colleague, uh, Council Member Scott Morgan, was reading off the accommodation, one thing really stuck out to me was that you were a recipient of the Air Medal. And for anyone at home or in the audience that does not know what the Air Medal is in the Army, um, just reading it verbatim, the Air Medal is awarded 
for a single acts of heroism and meritorious, meritorious achievement while participating in aerial flight. Wow. That is not something that's given out lightly, oh. and uh, it's just kind of a testament to who you are as a person and your service to your nation. So thank you very much, sir. Congratulations. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, sir. Our uh, heartfelt thanks for everything that you've contributed to the city and setting us on the right track through all those uh, accounting things that you did. I'm not a I'm not a number guy, so I'll just say the accounting things. I even write the checks for you. Whoa. That's even better. That's even better. <laughs> We're gonna have some special hearings about those mistakes, but no, just, Mr. President. Th Mr. Barr. Just very briefly, he he's not gonna say it himself, but I just want to tell you, Mr. Donovic read that out to you. Uh, he's a fellow recipient of the Air Medal. So he would share that in common with you, and he won't say it himself. So I thought I'd point it out. Thanks. But he's not going to be on the Smunkers team. So it really doesn't matter. Well, we hope he is one day. He's real young, though. It's going to be in about like 80 years or so. <laughs> All, right. All right, so thank you very much, Mr. Lundy and family. We appreciate everything. You're always welcome. You can set us on the right track if you feel the need to, okay? Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Where I live is a new bird. It's a retirement apartment. That was one of the best things the city did. Yeah, it's true. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. We'll look for you tomorrow morning. <laughs> okay. At this time, the council has dedicated some time for audience communication. The first 30 minutes of the, the meeting here, um, in fact, is there anybody at this time who would like to address the, the council as audience communication? Going once, going twice. There is no audience communication this evening. We'll go to the council here. Are there any announcements or special tributes from the council? Mr. President. Mr. Barr. Just a quick uh, moment to wish my youngest son, Trey, a happy 12th birthday, which we celebrated yesterday. So thanks. Oh. Happy birthday, Trey. Mr. Donovic. Thanks, Mr. President. I'm not sure if anyone has been following along on the Livonia Police Facebook page, but we have a new officer. He's got four legs, and he's very fluffy, and his name is Cooper. <laughs> Um, so the, uh, the way I understand it, he's a uh, uh, like a therapy support dog. So I think that'd be pretty cool to see a little golden retriever lab. I think it is mm -hmm. running around here, and he looks really pet friendly and very cuddly. So looking forward to meeting him. Thank you, Mr. President. Sounds good, uh, Miss McIntyre. I have two items. The first of all, first is our August uh, list of August 2022 retirees. We have one retiree, and that's Deborah Morosky, uh, civil clerk three, 15 years of service with the 16th Dis District Court. We thank her for her dedicated service and wish her a very long and happy and healthy retirement. Um, this, actually, I have three things. The second thing is I wanted to thank Alpha USA for a beautiful uh, barbecue that they put on at the Senior Center last Thursday. Wednesday, last Wednesday. Um, it was just a wonderful event. They sponsored everything. There was a catering company, there were burgers, there was pulled pork, there was chicken, there was watermelon, and uh, thank you so much to Alpha USA for everything they do in our community. And uh, the event was uh, completely, uh, completely full, and it was just a, a wonderful day and event for our seniors. The other, my third issue, I'd actually, um, looking for some support for my colleagues. And this is not related to the item later on, and maybe it's on our study agenda for mosquito spraying. There are a number of companies that now spray for mosquitoes in people's backyards, and I, I know one is called Mosquito Joe. There are a number of them. There is some concern about these, the, the spraying that they do having a significant adverse effect on pollinating insects, especially bees. and. Um, I, I understand that there are many things that happen that have detrimental environmental effects, and some of, some of the things have to be done, like road repairs and 
uh, construction and a number of things like that. But um, the spraying of, of insecticides to reduce mosquitoes, and mosquitoes are a, a scourge and none of us like them and they carry disease. But I, I think that we need to look into uh, what it is that these companies use and how they spray and what they do to limit the, um, limit the airborne nature of their spraying. So I would look for support to refer this item to our Senior Citizens, Families, and Environment Committee. Support. We have a motion by McIntyre, support by Donovic. Anybody else from the council on this item? Any public comments, audience communication on this item? I see nine, none for either. Ms. Miller, will you please take the vote? Um, Mr. Chair. Did you I, have a further comment? Yes. Oh, May I? Um, and, and I would look for um, I would look for us to get guidance from DPW, and I'd also probably look for us to identify some people in the community who are knowledgeable about pollinating and insects. And again, I, I recognize the tension between getting rid of pests um, and uh, the environment, but but I I think this merits uh, look into with the appropriate experts and knowledge, not just you know, opinions. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank Great. you. Great. Uh, we have somebody approaching the podium. Would you like to speak on this issue, ma'am? Okay, good evening. Please tell me your name and address for the record. My name is, Sher My name is Sherry Amici, 31569 Bennett Street. And um, kudos to you for bringing that up about the uh, bee situation and the pollinators. Uh, we were beekeepers for a couple of years, so I would encourage you to reach out to the Southeast Michigan Beekeepers at Schoolcraft College. Um, we got a lot of beekeepers here in Livonia. I was mm -hmm. just surprised when we got involved with it how many there are. And we've learned about um, not only insecticides, but the use of non-native plants and how that impacts detrimentally to our pollinators. So uh, kudos for the city for looking into that. And that's just my two cents on that. Thank you, ma'am. Did yeah, she thank leave you. her name for us? Yes, she yeah, did. she did. She, she, she did. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, with no further public comments or audience, uh, Mr. President. Mr. Barr. I'm sorry for the, when I already spoke, I should have thought of this earlier, but I'd just like to, I'm sure council will join me in adding to the chorus of commendations for the three teenagers from Churchill High School. Mr. Barr, we have a motion on the floor we have to vote on. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I we, got out of order. I'm sorry. Yep. We, we have uh, no further comments on Ms. McIntyre's motion from the council, no further audience communication. Ms. Miller, please now take the vote. Vice President Toy. Aye. Council Member Barr. Aye. Council Member Donovic. Aye. Council Member Morgan? Aye. Council Member McIntyre? Aye. President Jolly? Aye. The motion passes. We can look for that to be called out of committee by Ms. Toy yes. uh, in the near future. Yes. Thank you all. Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Barr. <laughs> okay. Sorry for that. I got ahead of myself. But just as many have heard by now about the, the three heroes from the Churchill High School students who uh, saved some folks from a burning house that they drove by. Um, Chase Adams, Colin Anderson, and Ethan, I hope I don't get your name wrong here, Ethan, but Morse. Um, I, I, I imagine there will be some kind of commendation from the city coming in the future, but uh, we'd be remiss if we passed by this meeting without acknowledging them and just thanking them for their, their heroism and they, they're deserving of the accolades that they've received. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Barr. We'll actually have them at an upcoming meeting and there's commendations from us upstairs as well. Uh, Ms. Toy. Thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to give a shout out to, and I've heard this as a rumor, and you guys can tell me this better, um, the, the baskets that are so beautiful around our Civic Center area, um, especially this time of year. It's a shame it's got a winter has to come because they'd be beautiful up there all year round. But I think our court, um, Judge Kavanaugh and maybe Judge McCann as well and others, pitch in and put those um, up and they keep them watered is a big secret everyone um, that's what um, makes them grow along with the weather obviously but they're beautiful and and a lot of the plantings that we've done around City Hall and a lot of the residents that you know spend a lot of money and a lot of time on their yards and their beautiful flowers um, Livonia is truly a beautiful place to live so many people keep their yards up um, so beautifully, um, did I already say beautiful about 10 times? But anyhow, in all seriousness, um, we live in a very lovely city where people are very cognizant of what um, they're planting and how beautiful they're making it here. Thank you so much. And the plants want water, right? Yes, they want water, sir. Moral. Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> if there's nothing else from the council, I have a, uh, a birthday within uh, the City Hall family here. Um, 
our superintendent of DPW, Don Rorath, will be celebrating his birthday on September 16th. We wish him all the best. And on a personal note, I would like to wish uh, a happy birthday and a happy anniversary to my wife, Katie. Um, there's nobody else I'd rather be on this journey with for the, the highs and the lows. Um, I'm glad to have you as a partner. So Aww. thank you, and uh, we'll try and celebrate the best we can. Yay, Katie. Um, at this time, if there's no further uh, comment from the council, we will go to our agenda for the evening. Uh, first off, I need to note that we have communication from the Department of Finance dated August 5th of 2022, forwarding various financial statements from the City of Livonia for the month ending in June 30th of 2022, a communication from the Department of Public Safety, Division of Police regarding the subject matter of vehicle haulers and loaders blocking the center lane of Plymouth Road, and a communication from the Office of Governmental Affairs dated August 5th of 2022 regarding the Capital Relations Report. At this time, we will go to our consent agenda this evening. That is items number one through 13. These items were previously studied uh, at the last study meeting and found to be not requiring any additional study. So we will vote on them at one time. At this time, I'll entertain a motion for the consent agenda. Move approval. Support. We have an approval from Barr, a second from Toy. Is there anybody from the audience who would like to address any items on the consent agenda? I see none. At this time, Ms. Miller, will you take the vote on the consent agenda, one through 13? Vice President Toy? Aye. Council Member Barr? Aye. Council Member Donovic? Aye. Council Member Morgan? Aye. Council Member McIntyre? Aye. President Jolly? Aye. The consent agenda passes. We will move on to unfinished business. Uh, item number 14 is uh, a report out of the Finance and Budget Committee meeting of August 10th of 2022. For that, I'll go to the chair of that committee, Mr. Barr. Thank you, President Jolly. So yes, we met on August 10th, the Finance Committee meeting. This is the really the first step for council in our annual budget process. Um, it's generally a, an informal discussion about with, with the mayor and council and finance department about different priorities that we'd like to see in the upcoming year's budget. Um, that budget is due to be presented to council on September 15th, um, and then there's some public there is a public hearing, um, and I forget the exact date on which we will ultimately vote to approve that budget, but it's sometime before November 1st. Um, that was actually the second item on our agenda, and since I, out of habit, just started talking about that, I'll just stick with it. So as we discussed that, uh, following a brief budget recap by Finance Director Mike Slater, um, we discussed a number of considerations for preparation of the budget. None of these are officially in the budget. They were just things that we talked about. So in the interest of transparency, um, there was discussion about a paved bike path connecting Curtis Road east of Farmington to Rotary Park to continue the Tatagen Trail. Um, there was also a discussion around including an allocation for the building improvement fund in the baseline budget rather than relying entirely on windfalls that come throughout the year to fund this. This is something that we set up a few years ago to start literally saving up for major building projects and we've been able fortunately through some windfalls that have come through some state funding over the last few years to, to put a nice foundation in that budget but there was discussion about um, actually making that part of our budget to put savings aside. There was also some inquiries about a dedication plaque at the DPW building that was finished a year or two ago. And then we also had a discussion about the status of funds from Wayne County for the proposed new senior center at the Kirksey Recreation Center. That item will remain in committee, as it always does. Um, the other item that we talked about and actually took the majority of the meeting was the subject matter of city vehicles. And this was something that council, um, if I'm not mistaken, it was Councilwoman McIntyre that had originally requested uh, from the city from the administration, um, uh, just clarity around what the policy is towards city vehicles. And what these are is there's a number of city employees, mostly department heads, but a few other particular functions, and then some elected officials, namely the, the mayor, the treasurer, and the clerk, that receive assigned vehicles from the city. Um, just a quick overview on what that looks like now, and much of what I'm about to say are details that, uh, that we discussed that night. Um, currently, the mayor decides who gets a city vehicle, a small number of employees get stipends, which have been set at $350, um, but many of those vehicles are, are just assigned with, without a stipend. Um, the, there's no current established policy, and this is one of the findings that the administration reported to us. Um, the rationale for who gets a city vehicle has not been consistent in the past. Um, the administration reported that they are currently working on development of a clear policy, um, and while they, well, I'll speak 
yeah, well, I'll speak to that more in a minute. Um, the, the make and model of those assigned vehicles is determined by what is deemed appropriate by the mayor for that position. Um, those city vehicles are intended for use within city for city re for, within the city boundaries for city-related business, though reasonable personal use is allowed. Um, the, the, uh, when that personal usage is, is done, it's, it's, it's up to the employee to report on that personal usage for tax purposes. Um, the city pays the insurance currently for the assigned vehicles. The drivers of those assigned vehicles are permitted to fuel their vehicles at city gas tanks. Um, and I already mentioned the mayor, treasurer, and clerk get those. And they are currently purchased by various departments, um, including DPW and LPD. And there was also some dis discussion as we inquired about the, the true cost of this, this approach. Uh, the administration reported that the cost of assigned vehicles are difficult to track since the purchase, fuel, repairs, and maintenance costs are not broken out by a specific vehicle. Um, what, what the mayor talked to us about is in, in looking into this lack of current policy, they're currently working on a revised policy. They voiced an intent to move towards stipends across the board. Um, again, however, that would be at the discretion of the administration. So we had an in-depth discussion about this and, and the merits of the current approach um, and, and what we'd like to see in the future. And while we, and, and I'll just speak, this is all in the minutes as well, but I'll just paraphrase. Um, while we recognize that this is within the prerogative of the mayor to establish this policy, the reason it becomes an interest of the council is because when we're talking about a budget, we naturally have an interest in, in what the cost of this is. And so one of the requests that was made to the administration was that we see a detailed vehicle and stipend policy by position um, as part of the budgetary cycle this year. And there's been some subsequent communication around that and, and, and more to come on that. Uh, Councilwoman McIntyre asked that that subject item remain in the committee. So that's what will happen. And this meeting um, adjourned at 810 on that night. Oh, Mr. President, I also should just mention as a matter of course, uh, the people that were present were myself, Councilwoman McIntyre, Council President Jolly, Councilmember Scott Morgan, as well as Mayor Brosnan, Leo Neville from the Law Department, Mike Slater from the Finance Department, Linda Shield, City Treasurer, and Chief of Staff Dave Varga. So that's my report out. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. McIntyre? Yes, may I, uh, Mr. Chair, if I may add something that I've learned since our finance meeting? Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Councilman Barr and uh, Chairman of the Committee for an excellent readout and conducting a very good meeting. We discussed, and the mayor had told us that there was no policy around the vehicle usage. And um, what I've learned since that time, when uh, former mayor Jake Engelbretson, there was a policy that vehicles could not be taken out of the county for any reason. Um, and so, uh, just another maybe thing for us to figure out is how this policy went from a policy to to no policy, because at one time there was a policy, and I think it would be helpful to maybe unearth what the policy was at one time that existed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, ma'am. Seeing nothing else from the council, is there any audience communication in regards to item number 14? I see none. This requires no action of the council at this time. Item number 15 is new business. That's a proposed amendment to the Livonia Code of Ordinances as amended, coming to us from the engineering division to add chapter 22 Stormwater Management to Title 13 of the Livonia Code of Ordinances as amended. Looking for a motion. I need a motion from the council to discuss this. So moved. Motion by McIntyre. Support. Support by Toy. Are we looking for a first reading, Mr. <coughs> President? Yeah, first reading. Maybe. Oh, I apologize. So I need a first read. Can I take your motion as a first read, Ms. McIntyre? Yes, I'm sorry. So we'll have a first read on item number 15. Uh, what a first read is, because we had some confusion about this in the past, so I guess we should probably try and explain this a little bit more thoroughly. Um, a first read is basically putting the public on note that we are looking to change an ordinance or add to the ordinances here in the city of Livonia. Um, the entire text of the ordinance change is available on the website. We have it all available to us as well. Um, even though we say it is a first read, it is more of a notification to the public that we are looking to do this, potentially. Um, when there is a first read, it will require a second read, a second notification before it is voted on by the council. If you'd like to look at what that change in ordinance is proposed to be, you can find that on the city website. At this time, do we have any comment on the, this item from the council? I, I see none. Any audience communication on this? 
I see none. Mr. Lear? Um, it, one of the things we were requesting on this is to invoke the emergency clause on this to be able to do a second reading as well as a vote on it mm. to move this along. It's a more or less a standard language that the state of Michigan has required us to do to govern pre and post construction runoffs. So it's, it's more just a form template that we're trying to incorporate into our ordinances to discuss how, it's, how things are handled with the construction process. Is there a, a deadline for doing so? The, yes, the deadline was, I believe, last November. Okay. Uh, so we're, but we haven't been delaying all on our own. We've been waiting for the state to also clarify exactly what they want, as well as having other communities incorporate there so we could see what language they used. And now that we finally got that this past spring, we're to that point where we would like to get this on the books and, and try and get it, uh, make us legal with the state. Thank you, Mr. Lear. Uh, can I have a motion to suspend the rules? I will, sure. Support. Will. Motion to suspend the rules by Toy, support by McIntyre. Uh, is there any audience, any council comment on suspending the rules? Is there any audience communication in regards to suspending the rules? I see neither. Ms. Miller, will you please take the vote Mr. on Mr. President, yeah. I do have just, this is maybe just a legal technicality, but I don't think it's suspending the rules we need to do it on, it's to invoke the emergency clause, which oh, I'm sorry. I think are different things. So yeah. I just want to be clear on what we're doing. We'll take the motion as, if that's okay with you. Yes. To invoke the emergency clause, first and second there. Any comment from the council or the audience? I see none. Ms. Miller, can you take the vote, please? Vice President Toy. Aye. Council Member Barr. Aye. Council Member Donovic? Aye. Council Member Morgan? Aye. Council Member McIntyre? Aye. President Jolly? Aye. The emergency clause is invoked. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. So well, moved. Or I'll entertain a second reading, rather. Oh, that, sorry. That's she, offered by Ms. Toy. She, uh, any council? I'll take it first, so I'll let her. Well, you already did it. We're just. Okay. At this time, any council communication on this? I see none. Any audience communication on item number 15? I see none. Ms. Miller, will you take the vote on item 15? Vice President Toy? Aye. Council Member Barr? Aye. Council Member Donovic? Aye. Council Member Morgan? Aye. Council Member McIntyre? Aye. President Jolly? Aye. The motion passes. The ordinance will become effective upon publication in the newspaper. Item number 16 is a roll call vote from the Department of Law for petition 202204030301 submitted by Stonefield Engineering and Design on behalf of Haggerty Residential LLC, a request to determine whether or not to vacate an existing sanitary sewer easement at 19750 Haggerty Road, located on the south, uh, excuse me, located on the east side of Haggerty Road between seven mile and eight mile roads in the southwest quarter of section six. This is council resolution 220-22, first reading was given by Council Member Barr on August 22nd. Mr. Chair. Mr. Barr. I will offer second reading. Do we have second reading on this item? Does anybody on the council have anything to say? Does anybody in the audience have <coughs> anything to say in regards to item number 16? I see none. <coughs> Ms. Miller, will you take the vote at this time? Vice President Toy. Aye. Council mm -hmm. Member Barr. Aye. Council <coughs> Member Donovic. Aye. Council Member Morgan. Aye. Council Member McIntyre? Aye. President Jolly? Aye. Item 16 passes, and we'll move on to item number 17, an award of bid from the Department of Public Works <laughs> for the replacement of the <coughs> Carl Sandburg roof from budgeted funds. Can I have a motion? So move. Is that a move to approve? Yes. Motion to approve from Toy. I need a second from the council. I'll second. Mr. Morgan's provided the second. Uh, do we have anybody here from DPW or the library who would like to give us further information on this matter? Please come to the podium. Good evening, sir. Your name, please. Good evening, Council. Jacob Rushlow, Assistant Director of Public Works. Um, yeah, at the last meeting, we brought this at the study to request the award of bid for the Sandberg roof replacement. Um, at that time, a motion was made to put it on the regular. Um, there was, to my recollection, there was no additional information requested uh, other than one question from 
Council McCullough regarding the thickness of the 25-year uh, membrane roof uh, that was being put on as a replacement. Um, that To answer that question, that was a 60 mil uh, thickness PVC membrane that would have a 25-year warranty. Okay. Mr. Mr. Barr? Uh, question for Mr. Rushlow. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Jacob, I, I am probably asking you a question that you answered at the study meeting, so forgive me if this is a repeat, but the, first of all, I, I trust you guys' judgment on this. We, I know we talked about the quote, and it was below what we had estimated it would be, and that's all good. So no issues there. My question is just on timing, though. What is, is, is this an urgent, re would there be a catastrophic risk of delaying this if we wanted to hold off on talking about this until after a couple of the items that are in committee, one of which is scheduled in a few weeks related to the libraries? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not a detrimental uh, situation where there is an immediate need to structurally it needs fix to be done roof. but it, it's not yeah. there are leaks that have been occurring frequently and lately and those have been temporarily repaired uh, because it's a coal tar pitch roof you know it's basically dumping more hot tar into the roof to try and seal up those leaks with that liquid once it hardens that's the only thing we can do right now to help that situation until we get on this new type of roof okay thank you for that and I want to I want to be abundantly clear I'm not against what's being proposed um, but it does seem to me when, when there's some larger strategic discussions out there around the libraries, I know we have an item coming up in committee here in a couple weeks. There's another item related to this, I believe, in another committee that's out there. Um, there the mayor's just recently been calling some rapid response meetings you know, with small <coughs> members of council to talk about some things related to the libraries. And so with all that in mind, it just seems to me that the proper sequence of things would be to make sure we're all aligned on, on what the long-term strategy for the libraries is before we invest a quarter million dollars in this, which is which is what we're talking about. If this was twenty thousand dollars, you know, I'd, I'd probably think differently. But at that amount, um, it just seems if there's no c super urgent reason to do it now versus a few months from now, I'd kind of like to see that play out. So with that in mind, I'd like to offer for council's consideration a substitute resolution to send this to Capital Outlay and Infrastructure Committee, which is the committee that's handling the other item on this. Do we have a second for that? Second. Mr. Chair, yep. and thank you for the second, Councilwoman McIntyre. Um, and I realize this is probably catching my colleagues by surprise, but um, the, the reason I'm offering this for committee is just I don't want to see this denied. Um, I just like, like to put it there so that we can handle it after we've had some of those larger strategic discussions. So thank you. Mr. President, Ms. Toy. If I may, to Mr. Rushwell. Mr. Rushwell, um, are you aware of uh, any further consideration for the Carl Sandburg um, Library um, as it pertains to it today or maybe even tomorrow? Um, I, I'm not sure if I'm following exactly what my colleague is, is alluding to. Um, I, I've never found it to where department heads or anyone else has come to us, asked us for money, and then we've done something to not <laughs> appreciate the fact that we just fixed up a building or whatever, or maybe maybe that's different now that we have a different administration. I don't know, but I, I can ask you if you could kind of guide me in that direction or whatever direction you're going in if, if you're allowed, not allowed, but if you're able to publicly. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't have any information that I can share that I'm aware of regarding the current or you know, future plans for, for this building at all. And I think that's probably a part of the larger discussion with the committee about the libraries in general, um, you know, as far as building condition goes and uh, future plans for imp improvement, expansion, operational needs, all that type of good stuff, uh, similar to what we're doing with some of the other buildings right now um, throughout, throughout the city. In this particular case, you know, we, we know from a building maintenance perspective, we have an older building that is in need of repairs. We put together, put forth a proposal and put that out on bids through Mitten to have contractors bid on that work. Uh, that's what's before you today is obviously for that roof repair, which is just one specific component obviously of the entire building envelope and what's needed to maintain a, a structure like that. Um, you know, from our perspective in DPW, when we see, when we're involved with building maintenance throughout the entire city, we see there are issues that need to be addressed um, that's when we do, you know, this type of procedure to go through that process and take it before you to ask for the request for those funds to award 
to a contract uh, contractor like this to do that work and improvement. Um, so at this time, you know, this, this bid is out there. There is a bid bond in place uh, where they need to hold those prices for a number of days uh, prior to that, uh, when that would expire. Once that expires, uh, we would most likely need to go back out for bids um, right. to obtain new pricing. And that would be uh, if the contractors would not or could not uh, uh, want to hold their prices that were put forth in the bid once it's beyond that uh, bid bond date. Date, okay. I, I kind of get the, all what you've just shared with us and I appreciate that information. My colleague makes a, several good points in, in what he has said. Um, I, I have just been of the understanding that you're doing things not only for the safety of the building and all that good stuff that we do, but also that we're doing this as an investment into that building for whatever reason. And I kind of think, would you come to us with that when there's a different intent in this whole thing? That's all. Uh, that's what I was trying to drive um, to see if you could enlighten me in any of those respects. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Donovan. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, thanks, Mr. Rushlow and um, our library director and the library commission for the work you do. I, it's publicly known I've been critical of the fact that we have libraries that are falling apart and, and uh, I'd like to see that that looked at and the mayor's office is doing that. There, there's meetings uh, that have just been scheduled that we're going to start talking with the administration about what the future of our libraries look like. I think libraries in our community are very important and uh, that's why I've been critical because we are talking about spending a lot of money on one library when we don't really know the future of the libraries in our community. Um, I understand what Councilman Barr is, is getting at. I, I will support it. I am a little worried, and maybe you can help me again. I know you kind of touched on it, Mr. Rushlow. If we wait, you know, after these meetings take place, which I think is makes a lot of sense, let's talk about the future of our libraries before we spend a quarter million dollars on one building. They may not be there two, three, four, five years from now. I don't know. I'm just, just elaborating a little bit here. If we push back the construction of the roof, the push pushing this back to a committee meeting, I imagine we will not be able to do the work in this season because of the new the cycles changing. With that being said, I know you kind of touched on it. We can't guarantee this price. Let's just say start of next construction season. I'm just assuming. Can you kind of elaborate on that a little bit? <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, that's correct. And I, would, I, I was flipping through my paperwork trying to find the exact number of days, and I don't have the the um, I have the the bid award sheet here, but not. Um, the request for proposals, which indicates what's required for that bid bond. Um, typically, it's either 90 or 120 days from the time that bids are opened uh, to when the contractor is required to hold those prices um, that they've put forth in their bid. So I'd have to double check exactly what that looks like. But it's either, usually it's either 90 or 120 days um, from that bid opening. So, you know, we essentially have a few months uh, from now to where we be able to award this. Um, and potentially start in the spring. Um, like I said, if we if we can get through this and award it prior to uh, that bid bond expiring. So let me, uh, one more question, Mr. Chair. Does Did you intend to do the roof next spring or did you intend to do the roof this year before the winter came? The roof would, we'd have to work with the contractor on the schedule. Um, it's really gonna be dependent on when he can get his materials delivered, if he would be able to start uh, now or start in the spring. Our intention was six months were allowed in the contract from the time of when we issue them a notice to proceed to start that they have to finish the project. Okay, well then I'm okay with that then because you intended to wait six months, give or take anyway, so I don't think that us waiting a few more weeks uh, uh, following council meeting is really gonna hurt anything. We have some really important discussions coming up. I'm okay with having a couple more discussions before we approve, which I anticipate this will be approved in the future anyways. I just think it's okay to have these conversations before we spend this money. Uh, but I will be in support of fixing the roof and I would be in support of uh, Councilman Barr's uh, motion. Thank you, Mr. For President. If Ms. I can, just one clarification on that. The six months uh, time frame that I mentioned was uh, from when we issue them to start work to when they have to complete the project. So we wouldn't wait six months to start. It'd be six months that they have to build and finish the job. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Rochelle. Ms. McIntyre. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to support uh, Mr. Barr's resolution regardless, but I would like to ask um, if between now and or as soon as you can, Jacob, if you could get the information on the bid bond, uh, the, the bid bond 
uh, validity dates or periods to the council, that would be helpful. And we, we talk a lot about concern about the future of Livonia libraries. One of the, I think one of the important elements of that, that that I don't understand other than the kind of high level stuff that I read, is the future of libraries. And I know our library director who's here this evening um, does an excellent job of looking towards the future and what the changes look like. But I, I would like that without making this all encompassing in our meeting to hear maybe from our library, um, our library director, what the future of libraries looks like. And it, it certainly, I don't want to imply at all that I don't think that we need libraries or branch libraries, but uh, you know, the, the move from hard materials to digital materials has, has been so quick. And I think that's, I'm certain that's reshaping a lot of the thinking about what community libraries should look like and what the needs are. So I'm gonna ask for that. And again, just in a little encapsulated way, not, you know, not a large 50 year look at what our library should look like. Thank you, Ms. McIntyre. Mr. Chair. Mr. Barr. Having heard this discussion, I just wanna clarify a few things. Um, and I, I trust Councilman McIntyre and Donovan from their comments to understand where I'm going with this, but, um, Number one, I, I don't know anything. There's nothing like in the works here with the libraries either. It's just exactly what I said. It's just we, we have some strategic discussions around the library and it just seems wise to have those discussions first before we commit a quarter million dollars, which I recognize it's a need. Um, from a timing perspective, just to help put everybody at ease with what I'm proposing here, uh, Councilman McCullough, who chairs that capital outlay committee, uh, has his meeting scheduled for Monday, October 10th with that library item on there. By that point, some of the other discussions internally that are happening around the libraries will have been complete. All these, if, if we can um, discuss some of these things in that meeting, in addition to those other talks that are having, all the discussions that I'm talking about having uh, will be done by that time. And that's well within, even if it's 90 days for what you talked about, and it certainly doesn't jeopardize the six month that you talk about. So I, I don't see this as being something to be fearful of, not doing the work if that's ultimately what we decide needs to be done. We're well within the window to do that. Thanks. At this time, we have a motion to replace an existing motion on the floor. Uh, we've had that motion by Mr. Barr, it was supported by Ms. McIntyre. Council has spoken. Is there any audience communication on the substitute motion? Just to replace the motion that the council is considering? I see none. Ms. Miller, will you take the vote on substituting the motion? Vice President Toy? No. Council Member Barr? Aye. Council Member Donovan? Aye. Council Member Morgan? Aye. Council Member McIntyre? Aye. President Jolly? No. The motion carries. The motion before the council at this time is a motion to send this item, number 17, to committee, as indicated by Mr. Barr. Uh, is there any additional comments by the council in regards to that? I think we kind of covered it in the previous communication here. Which motion is this? I'm sorry. The motion we are now considering is the motion that Mr. Barr has put forth to put this into committee. Okay. Um, is there any additional comment from the council? Well, yep. Ms. Toy? To um, Mr. Rushlow, Mr. Rushlow, um, does that guarantee, will this lock in the money then? We're, have we done that or no at any point here? The, uh, so the, the, the money is not really locked in until it's awarded, the contract's awarded right. by council. Right, okay. So we, according to you, we have more time to do this then, correct? We so do, we've got. Are we premature on this item, do you think? Uh, on, a, on awarding the contract? Yeah, on, on 17th. Have I you mean, come to us very early on it? Because I hear we're having other meetings, et cetera. You know, by, some of my colleagues have mentioned that, so I want to yeah, make sure. It, if I can clarify this. Yeah, would you? I, okay. I think there's just, there's a couple different uh, ways of looking at the overall issue of the libraries yes. that are in different processes and different steps at this Correct. point. Correct. Yes. I don't know that Mr. Rushlow is the best suited person to answer that question because he may not be aware of all the circumstances. Do we have somebody else here then or no? There, there are meetings set up with the mayor and the council okay. that are on the schedule. Okay. With that being said, Ms. Toy, I would like to hand you the gavel at this time. Sure. <laughs> thank you. you. can keep it as long as you'd like. Yeah. Um, 
Madam Vice President, can I have the floor, please? Please, go right ahead, have the floor. Thank you very much. So I completely understand the logic at which Mr. Barr is offering this motion, and I think uh, it is not unwise to do exactly what he said. But obviously I voted against substi substituting the motion, and I'm gonna vote against uh, the issue at hand as well for the very reason of um, I will not be supporting anything that looks in any way to close the Sandberg Library. So as far as I'm concerned, the investment should be done today is, is permanently as it will be done in a month. And I will not support anything, no matter what the future of the libraries look like that close that, that satellite location over there on Seven Mile. Um, a lot of these conversations have been started uh, in regards to questions that have uh, been brought about the other branch library, the Noble Library. And although these libraries are changing, their value is, is absolutely no less important than it was the day they opened up. Um, so although I commend Mr. Barr, the logic is there, I understand it, I understand exactly what he's trying to do. I'm just gonna draw a line in the sand here in regards to my vote. I will not vote in any way to diminish our library system. Thank you. Thank you, um, President Chow. Anyone else? before we call for the vote, or the audience. Anyone from the audience wishing to speak or address this issue, item, what item, let's see, item 17. Hearing and seeing no one, would the clerk, or the assistant clerk, or the wonderful assistant clerk, please call the vote. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Council Member Barr. Aye. Council Member Donovic. Aye. Council Member Morgan. Aye. Council Member McIntyre. Aye. President Jolly. No. Vice President Choi. No. Motion passes. I'll hand back the gavel to the president. Thank you, Ms. Toy. Uh, at this time, that concludes our scheduled agenda for this evening's regular meeting. I will go back to audience communication. Is there any audience communication for this evening? Last call. I see no audience communication. Is there any comments or co uh, announcements from the council? There appears to be none. I would entertain a motion to dismiss. So moved. Support. Motion by Toy, support by Barr. Uh, I think we can safely show six on that. The evening, uh, the regular meeting is adjourned. We will be back here at seven. No, eight. Oh, excuse me, sorry, 8.05 to start the study meeting. Thank you very much. <laughs>